say hello to the newest and best photo experience on a Pixel phone yet. The gods must have heard me because they upgraded the Pixel 6 with an incredibly wide variety of camera functionality for all the photo junkies out there. You want to take action spots of your hero. You got the telephoto lens. You like botany, insects, or pattern art photography. There is the micro lens to capture close-ups of your lilies. You can shoot JPEG if you're posting, or even shoot RAW if you're planning on doing post-production and really getting the most possible detail. With the camera's range of 12mm to 240mm in traditional camera terms, you really got a ton of flexibility. I'm planning an eight-part series that will break all the features down into digestible pieces. There are plenty of websites that have full technical reviews of this camera, but I want to show you how it translates into real-world experiences. This will be the longest video in the series, but they will be mostly around a couple minutes, and I'm going to be showing you how this camera will improve your photography in a practical sense. First things first, let's get this thing open and take a look. This is not my first hands-on experience with the Pixel. I use the Pixel 6 until now. And there were times that I would feel my smartphone would replace my professional camera. Image quality was insanely good. Now, with the Pixel 7 Pro, I'm genuinely worried that this will be my go-to camera and my Fuji will get lonely. It has three cameras lined along the back of the device. The first is the main sensor, which takes care of your average range needs and provides you with the most detail. Next to it sits the ultra-wide lens for both wide-angle shots and also the Pixel 7 Pro's new macro focus mode. Lastly, the Pixel 7 Pro has a telephoto lens for taking shots far away from your subject. When blended together with a pretty super sweet AI system and a whole range of tools, the Pixel 7 Pro's camera lineup can be quite the photography tool belt, giving you just about anything you need to take photos anywhere. I can't wait to get out and show you what this thing can do. Stay tuned for part two, we'll be looking at the Superman zoom. I wish I could get a better view of what my neighbors are doing. I mean, I wish I could actually film the detail in the moon. Good save. Well, the Pixel 7 Pro has your back. This camera has a 5 times optical zoom, but digital magic gets you 30 times closer. Thanks to that next level Skynet style AI, you really don't lose much quality at that range. So real world, this gets you closer to whatever you want to catch. Particularly in our great national parks, really wide open spaces, you can reach out and get that detail that most cameras miss. You can get that close up shots of wildlife without being the idiot that gets too close and ends up on a fail video. But also you can pretend you were front row at that concert or you can go to a skyscraper in Paris and then get shots of like every landmark, then spend the rest of your time wine drunk and shopping. It's not the deepest zoom on the market, but really the detail is excellent at 30 times so that you just don't get the feeling that you're zoomed in so far. You're just magically closer. This feature is actually the reason I went with the Pro rather than the standard Pixel 7, and I totally think it was worth it. I always disliked cropping and zooming smartphone photos and just losing all the detail, and now I don't have to worry about it anymore. Thanks for your attention. Next up on the list, we'll go from far to close, and we'll check out the macro focus feature. See you on the next one. It's great to be able to reach out and capture objects from afar. But what about what's right under our nose? Often with attention to detail, the colors, patterns, and textures of everyday objects can become art. You just have to be able to get close enough. The Pixel 7 does have a wide-angle close-up lens. 
but the magic of their macro capability is the processing ability to focus on something from as little as an inch away. Like three centimeters, I think, in European measurements. This is super fun. I've been taking close-ups of all kinds of things all over the house all day. It's really stunning the detail you can get. Your eyes are pretty good, but it's rare that you focus in on something this closely. So it's like you just never realize that things look like this up close. So if you're not an artist, but would like to take photos like one, this is the mode for you. In particular, you'll want to try this with anything natural, flowers, grass, insects, fruits, vegetables, raindrops, snow. You'll find the colors and shapes to be really breathtaking. It certainly works on things like textiles or manufactured products, but there's just something about the intricacy of the natural world that really lends itself to this type of photography. If you're looking for a photo to put on your profile that shows the world how in touch you are with mother nature, get a Pixel 7 and macro it up. And just in case you, like my husband, have issues with shaking when you snap, you want to check out the next feature as well, which is face and photo unblur. They're really trying to make it hard to take a bad photo. Looking forward to exploring that with you. Thanks for watching, stay focused and well exposed. I am not anti-blur, I'm an artist. I'm open to different techniques, expressions. I'm all for breaking rules in photography. When used properly and with purpose, you wouldn't think there's anything wrong with a blurred composition like this one. You wouldn't think there's anything wrong with me, would you? Come on, it's a good shot. That said, there will be situations where your hand slightly moves right before hitting the shutter or your dog moves too quickly before you snap a photo. This is where the Pixel 7 Pro's unblur feature shines. Don't try unblurring photos that have pixel trails like this one, because Pixel Pro won't be able to duplicate the pixels well enough to fix your face. But bit of a slip? No problem. I gave this shot for you guys. Many shots. Because they're really trying to make it hard to take a bad photo. Yep, I told you. I finally managed to get a blurry selfie. And voila. To me, this is gold. But let me know if you would use this feature in the comments. Remember that an accident does not always need a fix. It can be a happy incident too. Like Rick Rubin said, some mistakes are actually subconscious problem solving. You do you and let Google fix it when you need. Next up is we'll be talking about how to blur on purpose with this nomadic blur. Like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. If you know and love portrait mode for stills, good news for you. Google brought the same effect to video recordings. It's called cinematic blur. What it does is it tracks a subject in the frame and creates a blurry, out-of-focus background behind it. You might be thinking, Senna, you just explained how to unblur a blurry photo. What's with blurring again? Good question. You see, the shallow depth of field between the subject and the background has a soft, pleasing, candid effect on your images. It basically replicates what your eye naturally does. I'm a regular moviegoer, and you'll see this effect all the time if you're in the cinema. You may have seen it on the recent Spielberg movie. You see, it especially goes great with people, makes a scene more intimate than it actually is, unlocks the emotional element of a scene. This does not guarantee you a position at Spielberg's crew, but hey, maybe it does. Maybe you're a seasoned filmmaker who films with a phone. What do I know? And for mastering manipulating feelings. It's not just a tabloid. It's not just some story. 
the cinematic blur mode is only available on the Google Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. Assuming you own one of these two smartphones, here's how to use the feature. Open the camera app on a Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro. Towards the bottom of the screen, right below the shutter button, swipe through the various camera modes until you land on cinematic. Tap the shutter button to begin recording. You will need a subject in the frame for the foreground, background, separation effect to work. If we think from a different direction here, you can also utilize this feature to blur not so photogenic background in your videos. Your subject will be highlighted while unwanted background action will diffuse in blur. If you do product reviews like me, it's also great to have all the focus on your product so your viewers are following the storyline and not getting distracted by the surrounding. Shoot the holiday lights with the cinematic blur. It'll feel like you're walking through Disneyland. Blur away everything else but the little ones opening their gifts. After all, Christmas is not a season, it's a feeling. And cinematic blur will make that feeling pop. Like and subscribe, I'll see you in part 6 which is pure magic. Eraser. It's the magic eraser. See you soon. Let's talk magic. I won't pull a robot out of a hat, but I will tell you how to remove those rabbit ears. The magic eraser is available on the Google Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. In my previous videos, I talked about how to edit your photos with your smartphone. I showed you how to erase, but let's see if the tool is improved. To recap, you just circle the unwanted item, your X, for example, and voila. Team Google is really pushing this feature in their ads. Honestly, it doesn't work like editing in Photoshop. Depending on your photo composition, light, what you erase in the picture, you may end up with some smudginess. This doesn't mean that it's not an awesome feature because not everyone has access to Photoshop. Also, you may just want to do a quick post while you're out and about, and it's really great for those quick touch-ups. This is probably when you don't try magic eraser, when the subject is half the image and one of the main focuses. The tool needs to have enough background to compare and continue into the erased area. I'm sorry, I can't erase that photo from your minds either. My understanding is that the best use of this feature is for erasing small objects on a wide background, like a wall, sky, grass, where nothing is overlapping the subject, like these ones. I hope you enjoyed Google's magic show. I'm sure this is a feature that I'll use all the time. And it's really something that differentiates this phone from others. I highly recommend this to boost your social media game. Take better travel photos without waiting for the tourists to clear out and just generally create cleaner images in no time. Thanks again for your attention. Do hit those magic YouTube buttons for me. I'll see you in a few days for part seven. That'll be a big test. I'll set a high bar for success. We'll talk long exposure photos and low light conditions. My favorites. Can't wait to check it out with you. At last, smudgy, noisy night photos are memories of the past. The AI on Pixel 7 Pro does a very good job of making photos more crisp, clear, and sharp in low light conditions, or even straight up nighttime. For that, you need to access the night side mode. Swiping to right from the camera button. What makes this mode 
different than a normal camera mode is that it takes a bunch of photos rapidly and stacks them together. This sort of equivalent feature on iPhone could be perhaps the HDR feature. In high contrast situations, the phone takes several photos in rapid succession at different exposures and blends them together to bring more highlights and shadow detail to our photos. Let's start out with a fairly easy test. Mr. Frog's bed of snow picks up quite a bit of light. So even though this is shot at night, there's plenty for the pixel to work with. The trick here is to see how much detail will come through and how will the textures and colors present. In fact, even though there's a ton of contrast between the white snow and the dark green frog, his skin tones are really quite flattering. We challenge this night sight mode feature with some really difficult shots for most phone cameras. We are very confident in this camera's ability to take a standard photo in the dark. So let's stretch it a bit. Here we took a self-portrait in the hot tub. You got stream coming out of it and we're almost entirely backlit. In case you're curious how I hit the shutter, the magic word is pixel watch. More on that soon. You might think it's a beautiful photo. Indeed it is. It's because Pixel 7 Pro did a great job of brightening up our faces as much as possible. The background is super crisp and clear. Despite the folk coming up trying to confuse the focus, it's clear enough to see our smiles. The thing I really love about this is that this is not a long exposure, which has long been the go-to for brightening up dark scenes because the individual exposures are very quick. You can actually get movement without blur. So the next test was capturing motion. We wanted to see if we could even catch drops of water moving without blur. Pretty jazzed about the result here. If the phone can achieve this, it can totally capture a resting frog in snow. What do you think of our test shots? Can you think of any other scenarios that would be a great challenge for night sight mode? Let me know in the comments because I always read them. Next up is hidden in plain sight one of the most popular pixel features, the astrophotography feature of the night sight mode. You may need a flashlight to find those like, subscribe, and notification buttons, but definitely do it. I'd love to see you for the next one. Okay team, today we're looking at the astrophotography feature of the Pixel 7 Pro. Out of necessity, this will be a two-part review. In this first video, I'll be talking about textbook usage of the feature and my so far failed efforts to use it. Don't skip this part. You will not fail as I have. The second part of the video will showcase images of Milky Ways and gorgeous sky photos. Fingers crossed. The city I live in gets a lot of snow during winter and we've been getting winter weather advisories perpetually over the past two weeks. If I were still living in the California area, I'd make a visit to Joshua Tree or Death Valley National Park as the weather conditions allow the sky to be more suitable for astrophotography. Well, since I'm in northern Nevada and on the wrong side of an angry mountain, I'll continue to keep an eye on the forecast for a long-awaited weather window. All right, let's kick off part one and pick up where we left off. You are on the night side mode. Hit the setting, enable the astrophotography. You have to be zoomed in one time, at least for astrophotography to work. When the shutter button turns to stars, you are ready to shoot. 
For that, the camera has to be still and it has to detect a night sky. When you hit the shutter, a four minute countdown starts. Make sure to bring a tripod. There's just no way you can hold the phone steady enough without one for four minutes. Also, don't expect amazing results of the night sky if you're in your neighborhood with street lights and all. Get out of there into the country where it's dark so the stars don't get washed out with ambient light. Computational photography is good, but you have to help it along. So, where did I fail? In a word, weather. For the last few weeks since the snow kicked in, my eyes have been hooked on the sky and the daily forecast. One late afternoon, the clouds looked dispersed enough that I could see openings in the sky. Forecast showed partial cloud cover, which was the best we'd had so far. It was also the night of the full moon, thanks to TPE. I had a short window from sunset to moonrise with a possibility to capture the night sky. So it was time to pick a location. For that, you have to get far away from the city lights. We checked lightpollutionmap.info to find the nearest dark patch. The other side of Pyramid Lake looked like the best shots. It takes a while out there for your eyes to adjust. See? The stars were out, but once I set up the camera and took the first test photo, it became clear that a thin veil of haze was covering the sky, blurring the detail and obscuring the fainter stars. After a four minute exposure, this is the image we came up with. Quite a bit better than what I could see with my naked eye, but just not quite good enough. Hopefully you can see the like, subscribe, and notification buttons a bit better. We're not stopping here. In fact, we're coming for you, Milky Way. Let's give it another week or two until the weather turns. I'll make the best out of this feature yet. Just look at some of my unmet friends are getting. Meanwhile, I'll catch you on my next video, how to use the long exposure function. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave a comment below. I'll be reading those. Until then, have a bright and focused week. How can a photographer create a sense of motion in a still photograph? Is it possible to give a life and energy to a frozen scene? Well, it would be an odd camera review if I told you no. You can't. Fortunately, we've got the long exposure feature of the Google Pixel 7 Pro. If you don't know where to begin, try to think of a location where there is movement. Let's take a river. Mount the Pixel 7 Pro on a tripod. I use Leo Photo to dodge any shakiness. Go to camera, swipe right until you see motion. Find long exposure. Then just click the shutter and AI will determine how long to leave it open. When you check your gallery, you'll end up with two versions of one shot on Pixel 7 Pro. One is long exposure. The water flow is looking silky soft in the riverbed. The other one is a quick snapshot. Notice how sharp and detailed it is. Click back and forth to see the obvious difference. My efforts attracted a gang of supporters, so I turned my lens on them too. Here I'm thinking of focusing on the movement while the river flows in the background. This makes the whole frame come alive. They look like artistic impressions of two birds synced in motion. Then I wanted to capture one in motion and the other still to provide some contrast and tension in the frame. This required using my beast master whistle so it wouldn't move. What do you think of the effect? I have more photos of long exposure and will be later posting more photos on my Instagram if you want to check them out. Do let me know in the comments if you have any questions of long exposure. Setting up the phone to utilize the feature is the least challenging part of it. Finding a concept and proper scenario to use it are the harder parts. So you may have to do a bit of thinking before you snap. Probably also liking and subscribing will help you to brainstorm. Next time we'll talk about how Google brings your action shots to life with a different technique. So when your buddy gets loose at your next party, 
and tries to jump over a fence, you'll do the disaster justice. Stay bright and focused, everybody. We all know Action Pan, at least with our own eyes. Think of watching your favorite sport live in the arena. The intensity is through the roof. You track the player inch by inch while he's going roadrunner style across the field. Your eyes are panning along with the subject. It's now the single in-focus point from your perspective while the world around it stays outside of your visual attention. Faded. Wish your phone could do the same? Then just get the Pixel 7 Pro. With some practice, it'll help you to create that feeling of being inside the action, focused on a single point in motion. Here are the basics you remember to make the best out of this feature. You need to match the speed of your subject. Start out simple. Get in a car, sit in the passenger seat, and take shots of things outside by matching their speed. Try a cyclist in the bike lane or pedestrian on pavements, a car coming from the opposite direction on a curvy road. I think being in a vehicle takes the load off and it is a great way to get a feel for the future. You just have to hold the camera still on the subject you want to capture and the background is guaranteed to move and blur. Move along with the subject. Think of my previous example where I explained how you track the player at a game. Now, add your body movement too. Painting is a well-known photographic tool. Nothing new there. The Pixel's computational photography is new though. Just helping you to smooth out the jerky motions and adjust the settings to make sure you get a good exposure. To practice this, you'll need to be ready to move your whole body, not just to follow the subject with the lens. Easy practice would be to have a partner walk and you match their pace. This is a great way to create that motion and blur when the object isn't really moving that quickly. Stability is key. Holding the camera requires practice, so you'll either just have to keep practicing or use a tripod. If you just can't get your hands steady enough, mount the camera, loosen up the top, and move it from one side to another one. As the name suggests, the action pan feature is typically used for action shots, but try to think outside the box, because after all, this effect brings narrative and excitement to your photos. Take these shots, for example. I think they could be good for editorial use if you were to run a local news site, an article talking about a bustle of a city, opening of a new exciting business, or a bleeding problem of a city, the increase in numbers of drunk drivers, for example. A picture is worth a thousand words, and this feature has the power to make your narrative more meaningful. There are cases where action pan can look and feel like an accidental shot or beautiful by accident. When you start out, be prepared to have a lot of shots where nothing is in focus. Practice, practice, practice until you achieve technical and artistic success of telling a story. It's a worthwhile thing to learn new techniques for bringing your audience into the moment. Nothing worthwhile is ever easy, although the Pixel 7 Pro sure does make it easier. Okay, I'm moving on from the Pixel 7 Pro's features and modes, although if you have any other questions about anything, just leave them in the comments and I'll swing back around. The next video will be related though. I'll be talking about the Pixel Watch and in particular how it complements the Pixel 7 Pro. If you're interested, like and subscribe so we can continue the journey together. Have a bright, and focused week. First of all, let's look at this thing.
that's a good looking watch right there. Now that we got that out of the way, can it cook? I mean, does it do anything useful? Well, yes, in fact. Let's look at some of the general smartwatch features. You can of course receive text messages, notifications, reminders and the like. The screen is a bit small for responding to them. It's possible, but you'll mostly just be reading them. This will also depend on whether you get the Wi-Fi enabled version or the LTE. With the Wi-Fi version, you pretty much have to have your phone with you to get those notifications when you're out and about. But the LTE can operate independently. You can also use this watch as a pretty powerful body monitoring tool. With Fitbit built right in, you can track heartbeat, stress levels, calories burned, and steps, including vertical, thanks to a built-in altimeter. If you wear it at night, you can also get sleep data, which is very cool. This thing even has an ECG in it that can detect irregular heart rhythms. It's just a really interesting way to keep track of your activity levels. And it'll remind you more often than you would like when you need to move. You can load a ton of apps onto the watch. I'm still playing around with which ones I might find useful. Some popular ones would be Calm for guided meditation, Kumot for hiking and biking trails, Keep to take notes, Spotify for your tunes, and hundreds more that are available. There are a lot of times when it's really nice to not to have your phone in and out of your pocket to use an app. Now, onto the main reason I purchased the Pixel Watch. It can be used as a remote shutter for your Pixel phone camera. This basically gives you the freedom to move around your frame and take photos without being stuck behind it. Think of the old method of taking group photos. One person sets up the camera, tells everybody to squish together, hits the timer, and then runs into the group, hopefully into the right spot. There is no good way of knowing when the photo will occur, so you all hold your silly grins until they turn into a sort of confused look. Now, you set up the camera, you get in the frame, look at your watch, and tell everyone where to go. When you're ready, you give the old three, two, one, and push the shutter button on your watch. The photo then happens immediately. No need for the awkward timer. That said, you can still set a timer from the watch if you need to. You can also zoom in and out from your watch. One useful scenario I found is to take advantage of the 50 meter water resistance this watch gives you. This means you can leave your camera out of harm's way and still get photos of splashing around and enjoying a warm hot tub on a winter night. You do, of course, have to be a little cautious about this on a public beach. Leaving your Pixel 7 Pro 100 feet away on the beach while you hit the surf is a tad risky. You can do it, but don't be surprised if you look down and see your lovely camera in motion. On the whole, it just allows a photographer the freedom to get away from the camera and to adjust your model's hair and take a photo without walking back to the tripod or start a video while you're already in the frame. You do have to select the camera mode on the camera itself. You can change from video to long exposure from the watch, for example. For more sensitive shots like astrophotography or night sight, it also allows you to take the photo without touching the phone and causing it to wiggle. So do I recommend the Pixel Watch? Absolutely! It's a phenomenal looking accessory and thanks to all the Android apps you can put on it. There is really a ton of functionality it can bring to your daily life. And as a kicker, it makes you a better photographer. Let me know if you find that useful or if you have any other questions. And if you did find it useful, like and subscribe for more content. I'll be bringing you along on a light painting shoot next week. Very much looking forward to that. Thanks as always for your attention. Have a bright and focused week. Have you ever wanted to go to Burning Man to see all the celebrities and talent there? 
Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to the playa where Burning Man is held though. And we're going to see stars. Lots of stars. This week we are headed to the Black Rock Desert outside Gerlach, Nevada for some astrophotography. What? That's basically the same thing. Come on. Let's roll that intro and get ready for a different kind of trip into the universe. So let me explain why I've been away for a while longer than I would like. I actually went on this photo trip a couple weeks ago and haven't posted a proper video since then. The day we went to Girl Lock to do the shoot happened to be Super Bowl Sunday. We pulled into town about 2.30 or so and went out to scout some locations. The Black Rock Desert is just a jam. Super beautiful. I always love getting out there. After the scouting, we headed back into town. If you've never been to Girl Lock, and I'm quite sure most of you haven't, it's not a massive town. There's one motel there just the one. To check in you stop by the bar of the same name and get your keys. When we checked in they let us know that they had a Super Bowl special buffet. It looked reasonable. So after we scouted, having little else to do, we stopped in there. It was nice, we, we enjoyed the game. What we didn't know was that there was an invader there. A dirty little COVID bug was waiting for me. To be fair, I don't know for sure that's where I got it, but I do know that within a couple days I was, I was down pretty hard. That was almost two weeks ago now and I still can't taste anything. And I'm sure you can hear that there's a difference in my voice. This was a rough one. Hope that doesn't happen again anytime soon. Okay, that's out of the way. Let's get back to the photography. I chose this spot for a few reasons. One, it's truly dark. It's pretty far away from any significant light sources making it a really awesome place to catch stars. Two, I was hoping to be able to use the striking foreground of the lake bed to give me an interesting frame. As it turned out, the lake actually had water in it, so the thought then became to get the reflection of the night sky. Unfortunately, we didn't end up lined up very well with the Milky Way or interesting patches of sky, so it wasn't that useful, but it was a good thought. We did discover a glitch in the computational photography though. It sharpens the stars in the sky, but the stars in the reflection leave trails. Might make an interesting concept, but it didn't really work for me. The night was moonless until almost midnight, so it seemed like a great location to really see what the Pixel 7 Pro could do. Go back and watch the first part of my astrophotography video I released a month ago. The only thing that I did differently now was setting the focus to far instead of auto. I think that tweak really helped with the focus and clarity in my new photos. I had the right weather and conditions to get better shots this time, so I expected better. I see all these amazing shots in Instagram and I thought my phone should allow me to do something similar. Turns out there's a little more to it than that. If you have any suggestions for me on how to get something that looks like this, please do leave them in the comments. For some reason, the shots I took lacked that color, that easily recognizable Milky Way. I was pointed at it, but it almost seems confusing, like there are just too many stars in the frame, hard to get a story out of it. There might be some variables I'm missing, the time of the night, year, not pointing in the right direction, something. But especially when we look at the photo right out of the camera, there's just nothing that moves me. After using the Astro Edit option, I could certainly pull out some more drama, color, sharpness. This one is edited with just the phone, and I must say, there's an incredible amount of detail here. It's also really great to be able to get this kind of long exposure shot without the need for a mount to track the stars. The Pixels AI takes care of all that, so you don't get the trails you would otherwise. If you take these shots and run them through Lightroom or a similar editor, you can get something like this, which 
is really not bad for a phone. Is it what I expected? No. Is it the best astrophotography experience I've ever come across on a smartphone? For sure. So, a couple lessons. One, this will not work as well as a professional camera mounted on a computerized star tracking mount. Two, this doesn't cost $5,000 plus. Three, take this as an excuse to get out to a really dark place and do some stargazing. It's just so striking when you're used to the city sky. Well worth getting out there. We actually saw the smoke trail of a small meteorite. It was such a dazzling moment. We didn't catch the flame and the trail faded out before we could get it on the camera. But still, four, Pixel 7 Pro is an amazing tool. But you do need to do a fair amount of research and planning to do astrophotography right. There are night sky maps you can use and you really have to watch the weather and moon conditions to get it right. Five, get vaccinated, COVID sucks. Looking forward to your suggestions on getting those stunning Milky Way shots. Hope you enjoyed mine. I'll get back to 100% soon, but we have a pretty solid round of snow coming in. I'm really hoping for some warmer weather soon, so I can get up more nights without freezing my tukas off. Thanks for watching, have a bright and focused week.